Dear faithful, I would like now to briefly give our response or our reflection on the declaration from the Holy See entitled Fiducia Supplicas. This declaration, Fiducia Supplicas, was released on 18 December 2023 and signed by the Holy Father. Nevertheless, on the basis of the reports I've received, the reactions I've received from you, the faithful of this diocese, I would like to honestly reflect on this declaration, even if by doing so, I'm reflecting publicly on a document signed by the Holy Father. But I have to, because it's important that you, the faithful of this diocese, entrusted to my pastoral care by the same Holy Father, are guided, are supported, and uh, are strengthened at this moment. I begin with apologies. First and foremost, I would like to most sincerely apologize to all the many Catholics Baptized, catechumens, adults, youth, children, and all people of goodwill in our Diocese of Karunga, who look up to the Catholic Church in general, and the Holy Father in particular, for moral and spiritual guidance. From the reports I have received it, it is very clear that very many faithful in our diocese and beyond have not only been offended by the said declaration, but very much scandalized to see the signature of the Holy Father appended to such a document. I want to most sincerely say I'm very sorry for being so deeply hurt and scandalized by this declaration. I have also been told that many of you are particularly shocked and saddened that such a controversial document could be released at Christmas time, a time of celebration and joy. Briefly, why was this declaration written? Unfortunately, it is very difficult to know exactly why this document was written. It certainly cannot be said it was written for pastoral reasons because it must have been known and very clearly known to its drafters that such a document would not only offend but also scandalize many Catholics in some parts of the world, especially here in Africa and also in Asia. Because we cannot argue that for the Holy Father, offending or scandalizing the faithful is part of his pastoral care for the flock of Christ entrusted to him. I am particularly hurt that the drafters knew that in some parts of the world, like here in Karonga, in Malawi, in Africa, we have believers who are simple people, but with strong faith, but also simple faith, but they follow Christ honestly. Some of them, 
especially in St. Matthias Parish. They walk for two days to attend Mass with me. Two days. How many Christians in New York, Rome, Frankfurt, walk for two days to attend Mass? These are the simple people. I am, together with my brother priest, guiding towards their creator. And then they get offended by the very office that gave me this mandate, by the same office that they look up to so much for encouragement and support. Was this letter written to please homosexuals and their promoters? We don't know. Can the church depart from its rightful path simply to please a certain people who live in immoral unions? If yes, why could this be done? Do pastors do things like this in good faith? Or was this document written mainly to gain cheap popularity? It would seem in many parts of the world, certainly many people have celebrated this document as a sign of progress in the church and the popularity of its, its drafters has certainly increased. Our major concerns with this document or declaration. Our major concern is that this document looks to us like a heresy. It reads like a heresy. And it's, it affects heresy. The document asks us to bless two people of same sex as individuals, but not as a couple. So these two people of same sex, who the previous night slept together like a couple and present themselves to us as a couple, are blessed as individuals, but they leave our presence as a couple. They go to their home as a couple. They sleep in the same bed as a couple. But the document says that they are not blessed as a couple, or they, although they appear to have been blessed like a couple. How could this be not changing the authentic teaching of the church? Some of you, many of you, have asked me, why did the Holy Father sign such a document? Unfortunately, I don't know why. The simple answer really is that we don't know why the Pope was allowed to sign this document. Some have said him, his advisors didn't want to stop him because they were afraid of him. But what would they be afraid of? What would they lose by defending the truth? Some have said they wanted to please him so that he can please them. How? I don't know. It is very hard for me to give you the faithful of this diocese why the Holy Father signed this document. Our stand as a bishop in Malawi here, but my stand also, because I'm talking to you, the faithful of Karongo. We in this diocese 
and or certainly in Malawi, are not going to allow the recommended blessings of same-sex union in our dioceses. It is very sad for me that for the first time in the history of the church, a document released from the Holy See, signed by the Holy Father, is rejected by his fellow bishops and publicly rejected. It's sad. The Catholic Church is old, as old as Christianity itself. This has never happened before. But we have no choice. We cannot allow such an, an offensive and apparently blasphemous declaration to be implemented in our dioceses. Accusations against us. Those who have seen our rejection of this document have accused us of many things. First of all, that by sticking to rules of the church, or the scripture and tradition of the church, we prevent him carrying out our responsibility as pastors effectively. Some have told us that we should be willing to explore new paths and new roads in governing the local churches, such as blessing same-sex unions. Some have said that we should not be ideologically rigid in our faith and in our pastoral work and in teaching our faith. Instead, we are being told and encouraged to allow our doctrine of the faith to change alongside ideological changes taking place in the world, social and political changes taking place in the world, so that the, the faith may be modern, so that the church might be modern. In other words, we are told him that in a, fulfilling our responsibility as successors of the apostles, leading people to God, we should be fashionable. Unfortunately to all this, all these accusations, our response is clear. Please keep your allies for yourself. You must judge for yourself whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to such advice, ill advice, and to obey you rather than God. For we on our part cannot stop tearing the faith entrusted to our pastoral care by God through the Holy Father, that they should follow and do what is rooted in scriptures and in the tradition of the church. All those who ill advise us like this, our response is that we are not idiots. We know your ultimate goal, which I will not mention here, but Toto, Takana, we are not accepting this declaration. Our appeal to our offended and scandalized faithful. You, my brother and sister Christians, and all of you across the diocese, 
please don't leave the church as some of you have threatened to do because of being very offended and scandalized that the Holy Father signed this document. To begin with, you were not baptized in the name of a Pope. You were baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity. Secondly, when you die, when you leave this world, you will not be judged by Pope Francis. You will not be judged by Bishop Martin. You will be judged by Jesus Christ. As we are going to proclaim not far from now in, when singing the creed. Thirdly, know that it is not me, it is not Pope Francis, who was crucified on the cross for you. It is Jesus. Follow him to leave the church because of this mistake. You will also be doing the work of the devil. The devil will be happy to destroy your faith because of things like this. Third, remember, dear faithful, that the first pope, namely Peter, seriously erred by denying Jesus three times. And one of the apostles of Jesus sold him to his enemies. The denial of Peter, the first pope. We can also, I want to tell you that popes can err except when they are teaching officially to define an article of faith, ex cathedra, namely from the official chair. I also appeal to you, my scandalized and offended faith, to pray for the Holy Father, to pray for unity in the church, and to pray that the Holy Spirit and not the work of darkness will guide our church. Pray for us, your bishops. Pray for one another. It is in times of difficulties that strong people emerge. The cross I referred to was a big scandal to the first Christians. But some, nevertheless, remained steadfast. May Mary, who has given birth to our Savior, intercede for you, that you may remain strong in your faith. But please, my brothers and sisters, forget him and ignore this controversial and apparently blasphemous declaration in its entirety and have a peaceful Christmas. Amen.